The idea would be where you start conditioning your buyers, you start training your buyers to go to the website. So imagine if you're wholesaling your property, you know, you're getting your buyers to email you offers, you're getting your buyers to call you with an offer, you're getting your buyers to text you, you know, like all different modes of communication. And then if a buyer calls you and say, hey, I'm interested in that property, I want to make an offer, you just say, hey, that's great, fantastic. Yes, I'm going to shoot you a link really quick. Can you just go there and submit an offer through that just so that we can like keep everything organized? My name is Sharad. As those of you who don't know me, I'm the uh, owner and founder of Resimply. And I'm also an active investor in Northwest Indiana market right outside of Chicago. I live in San Diego area, but invest in Northwest Indiana because I used to live in Chicago. So kept my investing there. I own about 50 rental property, 50 doors. Most of them are paid for free and clear. Own a property management company also with about 200 units that we manage mostly or pretty much only for the clients that we sell turnkey properties to. So if you guys have ever have any questions on that, more than happy to answer. The today's call is going to be with how to manage disposition within recently for your wholesale property. So these are properties that you are wholesaling, you know, double close assignment, or you're doing novations. So it works for those. So the way it works is anytime you move a property over to under contract, and as long as the exit is either wholesale assignment contract, wholesale double close or novation, you're going to see a new tab pop up called listing tab. And then over there, you can create a listing for the property that you have that you're looking to wholesale. Um, you know, you create your listing title, whatever you want, and I'll show you kind of what the listing uh, looks like. So you enter the listing title that you have, the property that you're wholesaling, you know, whatever you want the listing title to be, uh, some information about the property, bedroom, bathroom, garage, basement. And then what is the estimated ARV? So when you're wholesaling a property, you know, the ARV of the property, how much are you asking? And if there's an EMD, how much is the minimum EMD? So you're starting to put more information related to uh, the specific deal. And then you have these additional options uh, offers and submissions. If you want to have a minimum acceptable offer, then you can do that. So for example, if you're asking prices of 135, if uh, if you want to set a minimum acceptable offer of let's say 133, and if the, someone tried to submit an offer for less than that, it would not accept any offer. It would just, it would not tell them what the minimum acceptable offer is, but it would just tell them, Hey, if your offer is less than the minimum acceptable offer set by the seller, please increase your offer. And then they'll have to just come up with a higher number. And, or if you want to have a buy now price, so think of it like an eBay model. When you're buying, uh, when you're buying something on eBay, it has a bid price and then it has a buy now price. So it's kind of like, if you want, your asking price is 135, but if you want to have a buy now price, if somebody received submitted an offer of 140, then you just, it basically moves the property over to accepted offer. And then, you, you know, then you can take it offline and kind of just uh, get all the documents that you need from the buyer uh, and then go from there. And if you want to have a deadline for offer submission, uh, so let's say if I'm making my listing, you know, typically a lot of uh, wholesalers that have bought properties from, they would have, hey, you have until end of day Friday to submit all your offers. So you can set that. And I'll show you what that looks like. And then if you want to notify your buyers about the multiple offers or any higher offers that are already on that property, you can enable that. Um, th this is a great idea if you're not doing this. If you have multiple offer, it just makes the buyer that's submitting the offer, they start seeing a badge that there's already a higher offer on this property or there's multiple offers, then it just encourages them to you know submit their highest and best offer. Same thing with the higher offer. Then you can go ahead and put the description of the property. Uh, you can go up to 5,000 characters um, to put a description and then it's rich text. So if you wanna add, you know, bullets or anything, you know, make bold italics, you can do all of that. And then you can upload your pictures and videos. The way pictures and videos works is when you click on add media, any pictures or videos that you've, any documents that you've added to that specific property in the file section, those are the ones it's going to pull up. So if I go into the listing tab, it's going to pull up everything that I've already uh, in my specific property. So if I go into filter in, in my uh, general folder, I can do select all. Uh, and then I can do like specific properties that specific pictures that I want to select or unselect, then I can do that. Click on add. 
it'll go ahead and add those properties. And then I can move them around if I want this property, for example, to be, you know, the main image, main property image, then you can do that, drag these around. And then if you have additional documents that you want to upload with your listing. So this would be, if you have a contractor estimate, if you have, you know, comps on the property or anything else uh, that you would like the buyer to have access to, then you can upload and then the buyer will able to access that. If you're hosting any open house, then you can put that information. So the buyer that's coming to your listing knows when the open house is and then any special notes that you want to put in, uh, who the contact person is for that specific listing. So it'll show you everybody that's on the team. You can select from there. And, and then you can actually push it to your own website. So this is not being hosted on Resimply. I mean, you can host it on Resimply if you just want, if you just want to use our domain, resimply.com slash, you know, be whatever domain you have. But uh, as long as you have a domain from GoDaddy or wherever, you know, you pay like eight, 10 bucks a year, that's all you need. Everything else is handled within Resimply. So this is what it would look like. You go into your website, section on your marketing click on website will open up uh, take you to your web account show you all the seller and buyer websites that you have so these are the ones that i have but if you don't want to link it this is what the domain would look like it's an active domain you can send it to anyone it's linked just for your account so anybody that submits an offer can do that but i highly recommend get your own domain you know, your custom domain for your buyer website and just link it up. So you have your own domain, you just send it to someone and then it can start submitting offers from there. If you want to create a, create a new buyer website, you just click right here, create new website, buyer's website, and then fill some information. This would be uh, live demo, Oops. live demo. Uh, site title would be off market properties in Indiana. Um, I would just leave this as yes, you know, this way, if you're doing any SEO, then it will just start ranking for uh, Google purposes. Company name would be, you know, cash offer deals and campaign would be the phone number that you want to be displayed on the website. This will be the contact phone number. Uh, it will pull all your buyer phone number, but if you want to use an outside phone number, your cell phone, then you can just click on other and put a custom phone number, but I'm just going to select this. Email would be again the contact email that you want on the website. And then the address, so I'm going to put our office address. 46322. And uh, cities that you do business in, I'm just going to do Highland, uh, State, Indiana, and zip code 46322. Uh, there's only one template. You go ahead and click create website. It'll take a few seconds and it'll make the website, create the website. And one thing I want to mention is when we went live, there was a little bit of uh, confusion. There's one buyer and one seller website included in every single account. So you get two websites, one for buyer, one for seller. You don't have to pay anything extra. If you want multiple buyer websites, multiple seller websites, that's when you pay extra. But the first website on both buyer and seller is free. So once you've done that, uh, you click on the dashboard. So now this website is like, I can click on it and this is what it will look like. Let me open it. Sorry, let me go back. Let me see how I can oh yeah, view, view site. So right out of the gate, this is what your website would look like. It's loading. So this is what it looks like. I haven't uploaded anything. So you can share this link with anyone and it's, it's your domain. Um, and then they can start submitting offer. But this is what it looks like out of the gate. As you start putting properties, they'll start getting linked right here. And, uh, you know, again, you can change your picture. Uh, you can put your information right here, update it. You know, there's like, uh, it's built out just for your wholesale properties. Any listings that you have will show up here, contact information, it's all linked with um, your account specifically. So if I go into back right here, buy a website, then what you wanna do is you wanna go into your settings and go into custom domain and just type in the domain that you have. So I have this domain. I'm going to do this. And uh, and then all you need to do is I have a domain with GoDaddy. So then it's giving you all the information. You just go in, put all this information on your GoDaddy, and then that's where your website will become live. So I have already linked one before this call. 
So this is what it looks like. You know, I have a domain called drive to deal.com. And anytime, um, you know, anybody comes, this is what the website looks like. So, uh, you know, I kept this as is, but anytime you have any listings that you're making live, you can start, uh, it'll start showing up right here. So any domain that you make live, so you can push the same property to multiple domains if you wanted to do that. So if you have one that's nationwide where you're listing all your properties, and if you have one for a specific market that you want to do that, and that property could be listed on both the websites. So uh, just keep that in mind. So as you do that, you know, you once you've updated everything, you've added all the information, then all you come here is to is like publish updates. And if I go right here, this is what my, uh, let me just make sure this is, yeah, great Philip and Hammond. So this is what it looks like to uh, end user when they come to the website. So if I go right here, this is my title. And then this is all the information, single family, four bed, two bath, year bid, square feet, lot size, and garage. So it's coming, everything is coming from right here. The information about ARV price and it spreads, it automatically calculates. So your ARV and price that you put in, the spread is right here. These are the documents that you uploaded. If somebody wanted to go ahead, they can just click download. They'll be able to download and view the documents right here. And these are the pictures. You can also upload a video and it'll just play in the browser, but this is what the pictures would look like for the end user. They can just browse it right here. And then, yeah, so minimum acceptable offer, I have 133. If somebody tried to make an offer of, let's say 125, uh, it'll just show them an error message. Your offer is less than the minimum offer set by the seller. Please try again with a higher offer. It's not telling them exactly what the minimum offer is. So we'll just keep doing that. So if I do a little bit higher, uh, so now it's telling me, so because I also have this enabled, notify buyers about higher offers. It gives them another, it still lets them submit an offer, but it'll just say there are already higher offers on this property than your current offer price. Consider increasing your offer price so they can do that. Uh, again, it won't tell them how much the other offers are for. It'll just notify them that there are already other higher offers. So I can just, you know, the buyer could play around. Okay, so there's already higher offer than 137. Let me do 145. Okay, so there's no offer you know, uh, greater than 145. So it just already kind of nudges them to submit a higher offer than the one that they were going to submit. And on the EMD, if I do, let's say 4,500, it'll just show them, hey, uh, I mean, EMD, it's not a secret. You can just, the minimum EMD is 5,000, but they can bump up their EMD and then they can go ahead and start submitting the offers from right here. So if I do this, actually, let me do this one, 138. Do John. Smith, uh, John at do simply dot com. We simply cash buyer. Okay, and then contingency. So this is again the buyer when they're putting an offer, they're selecting if they want any contingency. So I'm gonna do inspection, and then payment type cash. Let's say I can close end of the month. And then they can also attach any document. So I'm going to go ahead and attach a document really quick. I'll just take a picture. All right. Okay. I'll just take this. And then once it uploads, then I'll go ahead and submit it here. All right. So offer has been submitted. And once as the buyers are submitting offers, it's going to come right here in your system. So you can see the offer that I submitted. In this case, I did not accept, uh, I did not attach any uh, document. You know, again, mine is running on a different um, server, so it takes a little bit of time. But see, cash offer, EMD, if they're attached any documents, it would be right here. There's a contingency, you can hover on it and see inspection contingency the closing date that they selected. And then you can just, if you want to accept the offer, you can just click right here. If you want to edit anything, uh, you know, when the buyer calls and says, hey, I want to change my offer or whatnot, just click and edit. Um, and then this is where all your offers will start uh, coming in. And as you have, uh, and this is another thing that with the listing that I showed you. Okay, so if you enable this, notify buyers about multiple offers. So anytime you have at least two offers on the property, then this, they will start seeing this badge that there are multiple offers on this property. Okay? So they'll automatically start seeing that if you have it enabled. If I disable it, I don't want this, then uh, this will not uh, appear anymore on this specific listing. So uh, disappear. But 
you know, I, I recommend having this enabled. It just, again, encourages the buyer to submit a higher offer. And then this is the offer submission deadline that you have. It shows right here. Um, it goes to midnight. So you select the day and then it'll just keep showing the timing uh, until that day. But once the, the time expires, it'll just start showing not accepting any more offers. So it looks something like this. I think for my other listing, I had I had uh, not updated it. Yeah. So just so no longer accepting offers. So if somebody tries to submit an offer, just say offer submission deadline is over. But if you wanted to update it, you know, you can just very easily go back and then just go into that specific listing. They can just easily go into that specific property, go into the listing tab, and then just update the offer submission deadline to let's say through Friday, do that. And then just when you come back here, it'll just start showing a timer uh, to the new date and time that you have. So three days, nine hours, 45 minutes and how many, however many seconds that they have to submit the offer. Yeah. So again, same thing, minimum acceptable offer on this one, you know, is this is 147 asking price is 150. So if someone tries to make an offer for again, less than that, it'll just show them that, you know, you're not accepting offer uh, for less than um, it'll again, it won't show them any uh, minimum offer price, but it'll just notify them that your offer is less than the minimum acceptable offer that's set by the buyer. So as you're doing this, as you start getting an offer, so this is fully linked with the wholesale pipeline. So I have this deal, these two deals that I have right here. So I'm going to go into this one. This is 1248 Truman. Uh, just make sure I'm looking at the right one. Okay, so great listing in Hammond. Yep. Or oh, one other thing, by default, we don't show the property address. So if you want to show the property address, you'll have to either put it in the description or the title. So right now, it does not by default show the property address. Just, you know, uh, you may have a property under contract and you don't want your buyer to know about um, the property address, then you'll have to put it in the either the title or the description for you to do that. And then as you move this property along in your wholesale pipeline, let's say showing to buyers, and I'm going to say accepted offers. Uh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to put some information. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. So once I do this, now that I move my property from, you know, uh, stage of evaluating offers or marketing to buyers to accepted offers, when I go back here, the status will automatically change from available to pending now because it's in accepted offer stage. If for some reason this deal were to fall through and you know the buyer wasn't interested and you push it back to showing to buyers, you go back here, it will automatically get updated to available. And once you close a deal and you move it to sold, the status will change to uh, sold. So you have three statuses available. Available would be anything that is in your wholesale pipeline before up until the evaluating offer stage. So up until it's an evaluating offer, it will show as available on your listing. Once you move it to accepted offer or clear to close, it's going to change automatically to pending. And once you move it to sold, it will show uh, sold properties right here. And then you can, um, and a buyer can go to your listing tab and see all the properties that you have, and then they can filter based on any of these statuses, bedrooms or uh, bathrooms will be adding additional filters. So someone can filter based on city and other zip codes or whatnot. So we'll be adding that in a future update. But this is how it your buyer website is linked with your wholesale pipeline. So as you're moving your properties back and forth uh, into the stages, it will automatically get linked up. And then one other thing to keep in mind is it only works right now. It only works with these three exits, wholesale assignment contract, double close or novation. So if I were to move, let's say I decided that, you know what, I'm going to keep this property as a rental. So two things will happen. The property will no longer be in your wholesale pipeline. And then the listing will get deleted from your website because it's only for uh, your wholesale property. So if you're going to keep it as a rental, then the listing will not no longer be visible on your website. Cool. Any questions on this so far? Just a bunch of questions. We work in multiple states. Do we have to have a different website? Baby? No, Brianna, we, we already have uh, some users that are wholesaling nationwide. So in that case, you know what you would do is so if I go back right here, uh, website. 
So instead of, you know, so let me go back into this actually deal, this website. So instead of it saying like Houston, uh, Texas, you know, uh, this right here, I would just go into the settings page. And then instead of like Houston and Texas, I would just do like, uh, we buy, you know, nation, uh, nationwide uh, USA, like something like this. You can leave the zip code as this. But once you do that, someone comes right here and it'll just update to like we offer deals, off market deals in nationwide US or something along those lines. So I, I would not get a different website uh, for different markets. You know, we already have users that are doing nationwide or multiple states and already using the website uh, and they would just change it to, I mean, again, with your buyer website, you're not really looking to, you know, SEO optimize. You're just sending it to the buyers that you have. You're just sending it, them the link and they just go there. You know, you're not really doing content on your buyer. You could, these are WordPress website. You could definitely rank four keywords, but you know, most of your buyer's website, that's not your primary goal. So I would just change off-market deals nationwide US or something along those lines. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. This is a really wonderful addition. So appreciate Thank the work you. on it. Thank you, Brianna. Thank you. Thanks. Um, yeah, so that's that's what uh, that's what I would do. Um, you know, just manage everything. So the way you know our intention, like the best use case, would be, you know, let's say you have your buyers list that you have, and then you want to wholesale your property. So instead of you know creating emails, which you could always do, you know, you could create an email, send it out to your buyers list. And then have them kind of, you know, go back, um, just go through the email, submit offers. But the idea with this is to kind of centralize all the offers uh, that you have, all the buyer communication that you have. So the idea is, let's say you have a property uh, that you're trying to wholesale. So you take link to this specific property. You go into your buyer's database and select, uh, you know, the people that match your criteria. Let's say I'm just going to do, oops. let's say I'm just going to do people that actually have a number. So let's say I do this, I select these people, I do action, you know, let's say I'm just gonna do 10 people, send bulk SMS, and then you just selected your toll free number and then one, two, three, main street. Say, hey, check out our new deal at, and then just copy the link. And then the idea would be where you start conditioning your buyers, you start training your buyers to go to the website. So imagine if you're wholesaling your property, you know, you're getting your buyers to email you offers. You're getting your buyers to call you with an offer. You're getting your buyers to text you, you know, like all different modes of communication. And then if a buyer calls you and say, hey, I'm interested in that property. I want to make an offer. You just say, hey, that's great. Fantastic. Yes, I'm going to shoot you a link really quick. Can you just go there and submit an offer through that just so that we can like keep everything organized? But if, you know, if you have a VIP buyer and they're a little bit picky, they're like, hey, I'm just giving an offer. Uh, you know, right here, you can always go back to that specific lead that you have and then just submit an offer manually rather than, you know, having the buyer do it. So you can always just come right here uh, in the Dispo tab and just do the same thing, submit an offer, you know, attach any documents that they've submitted. But the idea would be that slowly but surely you start getting your buyers to just saying, hey, just go check out my website, you know, we sell houses.com or whatever it is and just see all the latest listings that we have. It's updated in real time. Any changes that we have, we make updates in that on our website in real time because it's happening. Like nobody in your team has to remember to update the website. As you move the property along in your wholesale pipeline to accepted offer, it's already showing pending on your website. Once you sell the property, it shows sold. If a contract falls through, you move it back to you know uh, wholesaling or uh, marketing to buyers it automatically updates to available. So then you don't have to keep texting or emailing your buyers. It just automatically updates your website. All you have to do is, hey, just keep going to our website to check out the latest properties that we have. And it's super simple. Anytime you get a property under contract, the listing tab automatically pops up. We'll be adding some more automation where you know this information will be pre-populated. Um, and then this description, you know, will add some AI stuff. So you can just kind of, you know, do that, uh, just type in, give it some command and we'll pre-populate that. But then as you start doing this, it just makes the whole process much easier, centralized place to manage all your buyer communication that you have. Uh, so Ontavius has a question. Do you need an extra plan for offer submission dispo? Uh, no. So there's some features. So 
the one website is included in every single plan, you know, basic pro enterprise. There's some features, I believe these right here. Um, I think these two or three are only included in pro and then the enterprise includes everything. So, but the website by itself is included. I think it's only just these features that are only included in pro and some of these features are only included in pro and enterprise. Uh, and I, uh, and I think the document is also included in Pro and Enterprise, the ability to upload documents. But again, the website is included like right out of the gate. It's super simple to set up. It takes, once you link up your domain, I think GoDaddy takes about 30 to 40 minutes to make your domain live. And then you can just start pushing your websites, pushing your properties right on the website. Uh, Stephen, that's a great question. Stephen has a question. Does a Matterport walkthrough work on the website? I haven't tried that. Uh, but you could always try. And if there's something I know, I mean, when I bought my personal residence, like that's what the agent had. It's super cool. Makes the, you know, the whole walkthrough very, very simple. You practically don't even have to look at the property. So yeah, I would, I would look into, I would try doing it. If not, then let us know. We can make an update on the back end uh, from our side. And one other thing, um, there is a limit of up to hundred pictures that you can upload, which is way more than enough. So you can upload up to 100 pictures uh, right here. All right, Sean has a question. Is the EMD set up as an equal to or greater than function? For example, do I need to set it up as 490 if I'm looking at 5,000 minimum or do I put, I would just put 5,000 minimum EMD, Sean, in that case, if that's the minimum that you want. So it's equal to or greater is how it's set up. And same thing for the price. So it's equal to or greater. So it's minimum. So if you put 100,000, 100, then it would take 100,000 as the minimum. It won't take 99,999. Yeah. Uh, Wontavius, uh, what do you mean? Do we have an advisory? I mean, there are, uh, if you mean like few users that I meet with, yes. So there's a few set of uh, users that I meet with on a monthly basis. So before we go live with anything, I show it to them. Uh, we just had a meeting with them last week. I show them kind of what we're working on, get their input or feedback. Like a lot of the stuff that we're working on, I personally don't use, like we don't wholesale any properties. We close on everything. So before we went live with this, like I showed it to a lot of our users, kind of, hey, this is what we're trying to build. Any feedback, any suggestion? One of the initial goal was that we were only going to make it live for, or we were only going to offer it for pro and enterprise users. And one of our users suggested, hey, you should, they, they were on enterprise plan. They said, hey, you should make it live for everyone. You know, this is, this is great. It just helps you with marketing. So that's what we decided. One thing with basic plan is uh, on this website right here, it shows powered by Resimply. So if you know basic plan, it'll just show on top powered by Resimply. But again, you get a free website. If you don't want that, you upgrade to the uh, pro plan and then it just shows at the bottom. All right, answer has a question. All right, there you go. Yep. So uh, again, I would just start taking this link and then start texting it to your buyers. Just make it super simple for your disc 14. Just say, hey, check out a new property. Just grab this URL and start emailing, texting to your buyers. And slowly but surely your buyers will automatically like, get used to like coming to this website and checking out for any updates that you have um, on that on, on your properties. Okay. What other questions or uh, uh, feedback that you guys have? We will be making an update uh, Q1 where all of these would work, but definitely if you have a rental property, you can start listing your rental properties also. It will have different fields instead of asking for uh, you know, estimated ARV. If you're listing your rental properties on there, it'll ask, Okay, you know, what is the rent? So you can start doing some of that also. And then we'll also be doing the same thing, uh, integrating this with the inventory. Uh, so if you are selling, like we sell a lot of turnkey properties. Uh, so it'll be great for that rather than, you know, again, emailing or texting our buyers. We can just send them this link and they can just start checking out the website for any latest inventory. So we can just say, hey, here's, here's the link. Uh, check it out. Then you this property, all the pictures, videos, everything you need is right there. If you want to submit an offer, just go to there. And then same thing on, uh, I think few of our users asked that they do seller finance sale. If you don't want to list their seller finance, which will be integrated also. So you can start listing your non-wholesale deals also, but it'll just look that different. Uh, for that purpose, you may want to have different website. If you're listing your rental properties, wholesale deals, uh, I think that's where you know I see a need to have different 
uh, website, you know, maybe based on the exit type that you have, not so much based on the areas that you're selling properties in. Cool. Any other questions or feedback or suggestions you guys have that we can we can work on? Hey, Dan. Hey, Sharad. Uh, first of all, great work. Um, we're Thank very you, excited to jump in. A um, couple of quick questions. If you do not have a buyer in your buyer's list already and they submit an offer, does that automatically yes. add them to the buyer's yes. tab? Yes, thank you. Thank you, great question. Yes, it automatically does that. Uh, so actually, sorry, let me go back. So even if you have someone, let's say, uh, let me go to the other one. I think this one I had an open house. Okay, let me just quickly go back and update the open house. So this is yeah. how simple it is. Yeah, go ahead. I have a related question too while you're yeah. um, navigating. Um, I, what I would like to start doing is doing outbound marketing to add to my buyers list. And it seems natural that I would point them to my my deals site, deals.buyboxhq.com right. and have them be able to see my current inventory, but also have a conversion widget where they can add themselves to my buyers list as a separate thing. Do you have the ability for someone to add themselves to your just, buyer list, just unrelated to a specific deal? Uh, I mean, they can go through the contact page if they submit their information through contact page, but that's a great suggestion. I'll talk to my team about adding a add to buyers list, which will just basically integrate with your buyers web form that you have, and it'll just work the same way. Yeah, um, that would be that would be you. tremendous yeah. because that's Absolutely. I want to start actually driving a lot of traffic to that site yeah. for both functions. Absolutely. And it seems natural that they would be in, yep. the, in the same place. Yep. No, that that makes uh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So what happens with this is um, anytime you have a buyer, so anywhere they submit a form throughout the website, if they're not on your buyers list, they automatically get added to your buyers list. So if I click on attend open house and I'm, I'm a totally new buyer and I just come here, submit my information. Uh, so I'm going to do uh, Mark Smith. Okay, Mark to uh, gmail.com. So even though I'm filling it for this, uh, this specific property, so it will get added right here. So if I go into Dispo, so it showed up right here automatically that this buyer is interested in this specific open house, right? And when I go back into my buyers list, he would have gotten added to my buyers list also. So based on the open list, so when I click on his name, uh, it will, anytime this buyer submits an additional offer, so I can see that this buyer is interested in one property that I have in this open house. So wherever they come from this system, if they clicked on make an offer, then they would go into the uh, the offers that this new buyer just directly came in, uh, submitted an offer. If they clicked on inquire about this property, then you know it would show up right here. And once you move them to an actual deal, then they would just become part of the deal. But yeah, I know that's, that's a great suggestion of I, I, adding a widget, like add me to your buyer's list or something. So I'll talk to my team. Uh, and get that done. So yeah, it'll just be a simple form where they put their name, phone number, and email, and then just get added to your bias list. A uh, few other things we will be working on that um, you know a lot of you guys have asked for is additional filter options. So right now, you know, when you're adding a buyer, uh, you have these questions. So these will all become part of the uh, in future update that you can filter based on these, and then market to your buyers based on this and there will be some additional automations where if you have this property based on this property you know if we find a match then it will automatically pre-select hey, these are the buyers that match uh for the one two three main street property that you have so you may want to select them and then like do vip buyers non-vip buyers and do some of those that automation so this is by no means a finished product uh, it's only a phase one of a lot of updates that we have uh, coming for it down the road. Yeah. So Dan, did that That's answer great. your question on that? It did. I have uh, a lot of thoughts. So I'll, I'll keep them to myself for yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. Right? <laughs> yeah, and then as you start using it, let us know any feedback that you have. Again, this is not something I personally use in my business because we don't wholesale. So I'm excited about 
a future update where we will be able to like list our turnkey properties also. Uh, so that that would be super handy for us getting our turnkey buyers just to the website and they can just submit all the offers from there. I have a question about the open house piece. Is this optional language or optional on the time? Like I don't want to maybe, I don't publish my, I want to vet those people. You know what I mean? Sometimes I can only cap it at four or five buyers to walk through or something like that. I would love people to say they're interested and then I reach out to them without necessarily revealing that time. Uh, I mean, for now, if you're putting open house, then it'll ask you to submit a date and time, but you can always just put it in the description or, you know, in the title, like reach out for open house details or something like that. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kevin, if you send me your email, um, just shoot me an email address that you have to do. Simply we'll look into 10 DLC. I, I looked a bunch of our users uh, earlier today. So there was something going on, you know, either their like website wasn't, didn't have opt-in language. So, uh, so I'll definitely look into that if you just send me an email. Yeah. All right. Let me just quickly copy and paste it. All right. Thank you. All right, on the ad buy link, can it also ask for what areas and state? Uh, Ezra, it does do that. So when you're adding, it will ask you city that you do business in. Again, you don't have to choose a specific city. You can just, if you're doing nationwide or you're doing, uh, I know we have a buyer that had the same question last, or a user that had the same questions and they're buying in multiple states. So what I said was just put like, you know, if you're in two states like Florida and Texas, for example, so just, put Florida and Texas, uh, or then you can do all cities in uh, Florida and uh, Texas. So you can just do that. So if I did that, this is what it would just update and show like this on my website. Uh, Off-market deals in all cities, Florida and Texas, or if you want to do, you know, like select cities, then you can put the name. So again, this is, you can totally uh, add whatever information uh, that you want right here. Okay. And then yeah, as we get feedback, I'm sure we'll be making some additional changes as more and more people start using it based on the, you know, feedback or other suggestion that I think adding the buyers list widget, that's, that's a super cool idea. So I'll talk to my team on doing that. All right. Sarah, do you have any other questions? I do. As far as website integration goes, we have our seller site that we use could we tie this in without really giving access you know was it just drive buyers to the buyers tab but not somehow show up for you know you couldn't find you couldn't be a seller on our page and then end up on the deals tab uh explain me a little bit more kind of what you're yeah, I'm not even sure if I know how to describe it right because I'm not that techie but so we have you know goodlifeprops.com goes okay. to is what our sellers find through our marketing. And so okay. they fill out a web form and that pushes them into, you know, they get zapped into resimply. Um, if we use goodlifeprops.com, you know, backslash buyers or whatever to link this tab. Or, right. No, I mean, sure. no, it's a separate not. So domain. It'll need to be a separate domain. Okay. Um, otherwise, I mean, I've we, we've seen some other websites where you have your seller website and your buyer on the same stuff like you can click on properties on your seller website and it just creates a little bit of confusion because yeah you know so okay. that's why we my idea was to just keep it completely separate okay. Dan, you had some thoughts on that well i was going to say we we were planning to set it up on a subdomain deals.buyboxhq.com um which i believe is possible my webmaster set that up for me i haven't linked it up yet but is am I going to be able to achieve that, or does that sound like I can't do that? It, it should be. Um, I'm I'm not a tech yeah. person, but one Tavius, you know, I I know he's a he's a tech guy, so he's saying it's possible. So it should be. I mean, like when yeah. you go into your settings, like this is the information that you need to yeah. like forward your subdomain to. So, however, that works in in your backend, you should be able to like this is the information we're providing. So just go into your backend and just point it to this, and then it should be able to work just like that. That's that's a great idea to do that. So you have, you know, your domain, the primary. I, I would not, I personally would not mix up the main 
domain, the same domain for the buyers and sellers. It just, I think it creates not for the best user experience for both your buyers and sellers. Buyers may not care as much, but I think for the sellers, when they see, hey, see my properties and they see about, oh, you know, you can yeah. like do these deals. I, I personally don't, I, I never liked that myself. You know, I would like to keep it all separate. Like even when I'm wholesaling our property or not wholesaling, when we're selling turnkey properties, I don't want our buyers to see that we're buying off market. It gives them ideas on, yeah, I could do this or I could, you know, why are you making this much profit or whatnot? Yeah. So, th so the way we were going to set that up, Sarah, in case it's helpful for you is deals.buyboxhq.com is a subdomain. It's completely firewalled off from our seller uh, website. There's no way to navigate in there. There's no link back or anything like that. So someone would have to know that specific. They would have to know to that to. domain and we're not going to index it by search engine, but we wanted to have them linked up because we've, we've done 200 deals in Pittsburgh in the last uh, 24 months. And so we've actually got a decent amount of brand equity on both the seller and buyer side. So while we don't necessarily want our sellers to know, oh, here's how I can see the deals, yeah. navigate and get on the list. We do want to capitalize on the fact that we've got the same reputation with 100 plus Google reviews and several hundred transactions on both sides. So if you can set it up as a subdomain, you'll get the benefit of a firewall and the benefit of a brand association um, if that's valuable to you. Um, Great. Thank you. Yeah. So then you're still managing everything with one domain, but it's like one is subdomain. I think that's a great idea. Like if you have that brand equity, uh, then you just use that. And then someone would really have to know the domain, the subdomain to get to that. Like your sellers would have no idea. They would have to know that it's deals dot buyer, you know, or whatever your domain is. So then only then they can get to that. And your buyers don't care. I mean, like buyers can just go there. They all know that you're buying wholesale property, so they won't care as much. Uh, but yeah, for the sellers, I would, I would keep it separate. So yeah, you should like, this is, I'm, I mean, I'm guessing again, I'm not the tech person, but I can ask with my team, but it should work the same way, whatever your subdomain is, like you just forward it to this information. Uh, so Sarah, yeah, what's the timeline to release the new sort features for buyers? You mean, uh, like the filter options and stuff, uh, um, like with the, uh, sorry, with so be able to filter based on the buyer preference questions. Yes. So right now, the one update that's coming out next week is that's more for um, just for enterprise users is you will be able to add um, multiple webhooks and then we'll be pushing a lot more data uh, in, in, you know, through the webhook. We'll give you offer information, appointments and stuff. So that's again for some of our bigger teams requested that, that they want to be able to create multiple webhooks. So that's coming with a lot more data as part of the webhook. And then on the app side, we have next month, hopefully by the end of next month, you'll have an app inbox that's going to be part of uh, the release. So you can much, much more efficiently manage the contacts. So think of if you use uh, WhatsApp, I don't know if you guys use WhatsApp. So the, it'll kind of function the same way. So if a lead sends your text message, you will have an inbox and you can see the entire communication of that lead. So you just click on their name and it just shows you all the calls, SMS, emails that you've had with that lead. It'll just be all organized. So if you go to the SMS tab, you can see all the SMS communication that you've had and you can just type reply from there and it just send the SMS. So that's coming. And then next month, or not next month, next quarter update, you will be able to integrate inbound email also so you can integrate your gmail and outlook so any emails that you are receiving will also come within recently and they'll start getting linked up with your with your buyers uh so if you send out an email blast to your buyers and they reply back through email based on the email address it will start attaching that to that specific buyer so you have all the activity same thing on their leads but i think it would be more useful on the buyer side same thing on the vendors if you're communicating with the title company, so you can choose this email that came in, attach it to from this title company, attach it to this lead, email from this lender. So that's coming. And a couple of other things that I'll kind of give you guys an update on that is going to be coming out um, next quarter is the, the calling features. Now that we've transitioned over to, or most of the users we've transitioned over to Twilio. Uh, you will be able to see so in call logs, you'll start seeing two tabs. One will be ongoing call, uh, ongoing archive. Archive will be exactly how your current call logs is. 
The only difference would be with ongoing, you'll see all the ongoing calls that you have going on. And then you will be able to click right here and actually listen into a call. If you click right here, you will be able to speak to your team member. If you click right here, you'll just barge into the call. So you'll have three different options on the ongoing call. Listen in, you know, or then just coach your team uh, team member. Only your team member will be able to hear you. And then this will be your just kind of, you know, your part of the conference call. So this is going to be part of the next quarter update that we have. And, uh, and this one other thing, a couple of other things would be when you search and recently right now only searches leads what this will become a global search basically anytime you search it finds a match you know with leads list stacking properties task appointment notes it searches the entire database and it just like organizes everything based on tab so if you want to search something and you know it's related to a note you just click on note and then this is it'll just match everything and show you in the note and you can click and go to that specific property and then this will be one of the other big updates will be with the notification center. So we're completely redoing it. For one, it will be real time. So you will get these updates without having to refresh your browser. So if you're communicating with a seller back and forth, the seller sends you a text message, you don't have to refresh your browser. It will automatically pop up in your activity log. And then it'll also be a browser notification. So let's say if I'm on this page and a seller sends me a text message, it'll pop up right here on the top right. And I can just click, you know, click on that, click reply. So yeah, something like this will pop up on top right. I can click on reply, just reply, and then it'll just swipe away and then just go back to what I was doing. So you won't have to jump into that specific lead to reply to a message. If a seller replies back, you don't have to refresh or pop up again. So you can just have a conversation going back and forth and you could be on any page. So that's coming. And then any notification that you have, you know, start seeing all the new ones that you have based on a bell icon. And then it'll be sorted by missed calls, tasks, SMS mentioned, and also email. So any new communication that you've received, notification, you can see all the missed calls. You can hover on any one of them click on call, click on markets red, same thing on SMS. You can, you know, just say markets red or just click on reply, type a reply, and then just be done with that. Uh, same thing on the task, you can mark it as completed or just markets red uh, for you to look at it later. So this will also be part of the next quarter update that we have. But this year we'll have one update coming out with the uh, the webhook update that we have coming out in the next couple of weeks. And then the biggest update would be with the app for app inbox that we have coming out. Okay. And then, sorry, to get back to your question, uh, the, the timeline for that would be next quarter, uh, Q1. That'll be part of the Q1 update. Cool. And with okay. that, if I can add feedback, um, Searching by those things is great. Those are customizable too, though. So I'm curious how you can pull that off. But um, being able to add in layers of the filters, like even as it sits right now, you know, tag is VIP, then be able to do, you know, tag is also, you know, like stacking some yes. of the current tags with yes, you know, is and then is nots and to be inclusive or excluding yeah, so that'll be that'll be part of awesome. the update also. And I think so, one other thing we're going to start doing is as you have your buyers coming in. So right now, if you add a buyer, um, I think this was like a feedback that someone else gave us. So right now, if you add a buyer, like you can just type in any city, right? It can be misspelled name. What we're going to do is a couple of things like we'll add a county also. Like that's one of the most requested features to add county. So what will happen is that then you'll start, you'll start geotagging. So if you type in a city name, it will have to be an exact city name. Then we'll like geotag to that city. If you add a county name, you can just make up like a random county, city or zip. Like it needs to be a valid. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, I've struggled. I've really struggled to use this feature effectively because right. when I'm talking to somebody, you know, so in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh is contained almost exclusively within Allegheny County. But if I tell, if I'm asking somebody what their buy box is, what they're looking for, they start rattling off Dormont, Mount Lebanon, Squirrel Hill, Brookline. You know, they list sub markets like little municipalities. And that's the common thing that they're using that nobody really talks in zip code right. for me, my experience. So unfortunately, I've started just shoving those in as cities because I want to have the ability to look up by sub market 
without having to go back and effortfully translate to and from zip code every single time someone sits so, to give me a list. So what so, is it's sub market, like just so that I understand, would would like San Diego be us, you know, a mar like San Diego County, it's county, but there's a city, San Diego also, but then there are other cities in that county. So what well, do you I, think you're doing was like city, state, county, and that's what we've heard. Not a lot of people like really use zip code. So it'll just be city, state, and city, county, and state. Yeah, I would say I would say city or you know, state, city, county, and then like I would be jumping over the moon if there was a like sub market option, which um, this might just be too much, right? This might be too much granularity for most people, but but like in Pittsburgh, if you can go out of the city, there's like Brookline, Dormont, Mount Lebanon, Peters Township, and the, you, you know, the, you just before you know it, you're in a very different market, and people invest in these hyper local markets. And they're yeah. there. So it'll be within a wanna... city. It would be that like sub market, like, like almost like a neighborhood, right? Yeah, like, neighbor, like would, a neighborhood. Yeah. Like I, I don't know right. San Francisco but, or San Diego, but like I, I guarantee right. you, there, there, are, there are little sub markets that have a name. Right, right. right. That makes sense. Locals. Yeah. For example, if you look in New York and then you have Manhattan within Manhattan, you would have like yeah, Chinatown, Bronx, for right? example. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. There makes are people sense. are like, no, this is my area. And yep, like, yep, that makes sense. The, the more I ask that question, the more frustrated my buyers list of a few thousand people get when I took all the time to do that discovery and then start feeding them stuff that they don't really care about. So I really like to, I like to get granular with, with appetite right. and then respond with precision with what I'm putting in right. front of people. So anything right. that can flesh that out would be super valuable to me. Yeah. I think that'll have to be like, it'll, it'll have to go into like other like area or other sub market or something because like city state county we can geotag right but the neighborhood it'll be a little bit tough but we would still want to make sure i'm just thinking so you're if let's say going back to the example of if you have like someone buying in let's say i used to live in chicago but in chicago i lived in south loop neighborhood you know chicago is a big city but it was just a neighborhood it was like just called south loop uh, and let's say if I were just interested in in that, um, but then you will just send them properties in South Loop. You would not send them. You would not even send them the whole city of Chicago, right? Just anything that match with South Loop. Yeah. So, so you know, Sarah, I expect our businesses are somewhat similar just from some of the questions that you've asked, you know, wanting to be insulated about who's seeing what. Sometimes you get an opportunity. I got a great asset in a a market that if everybody sees this thing, it's going to be, it's going to be a disaster. So what I want to be able to do is say, okay, show me everybody that is a pre-qualified buyer that is interested in Mount Lebanon flips. And right. I want to go access my past, you know, diligent work and see the 14 people who I know and have relationship with that have said, this is exactly what I'm looking for, because that deal is going to sell itself. I put it in front of those 14 people and send them photos. That thing is going to fly. But if I put that out broadly, then um, it could be, it could be a problem. And sometimes actually for the deal that I'm thinking of, as I did this, I did put it out broadly. It got back to the seller. And then I had to like bring them back all the way down the Here's what we're doing. Here's why we agreed to this thing. And here's the outcome that you're looking for. So having the ability to prune and attack with precision is super, super valuable. And I mm -hmm. don't know, I always like to think of, is this a downhill process or is this an uphill process? People speak in sub-market terminology to right. me. And therefore, uh, there's no translation that has to happen. If I could say we got Pit, you know, Pennsylvania, right. Pittsburgh, Allegheny County, and then no, I think that's a very fair point. Like it's easy for us to do city, zip, I mean, city, zip, county, uh, and state, but the, the, what you're mentioning, like that would even be, would that even be like a zip code or you could have multiple neighborhoods within a zip code. So even like zip code would not work for you guys. Yeah. I mean, it, it, so someone in the comments said you can use tags for that. Um, I mean, like if it was, if it was something that, um, you know, like the only thing that I'll, yeah, the only thing that we're trying to prevent, and I'll look into it. I'll I'll check with uh, our backend team. The only thing that you know with geotagging is we're trying to do where like it doesn't allow you to misspell something. Like it just auto populates. So if you try to start typing Chicago, you know it'll just show you Chicago. Like you can't just say 
Chicago, you know, random, for example. So that's yeah. what I'm, I'm, I'll see if we could do that with neighborhoods also, because that's what we're trying to do is like prevent any misspells or, you know, prevent any where you have like, you know, one neighborhood, let's say, you know, I, I live in the neighborhood that I live in and somebody goes in and misspells it differently. I know I used to live in South Loop. Someone says South Loop, you know, spells it out. The other person does, you know, SL and the other person goes into S Loop. So that's what we're trying to like prevent from happening with geotagging like city, state and county. It's like you have to select from an autofill. So I'll see if we can do with uh, with the neighborhood. I'll reach out to you kind of, you know, what we have on our back end. Um, but yeah, that would be that would be super cool to be able to do. And are these neighborhood identifiable on MLS, but this is something more like a local thing. Yeah, yeah. So like, you know, th there's a neighborhood code and then and, and there's also a um uh, a school district. Uh and, okay. Yeah. You know, so you know, there I I definitely have certain buyers that are like, I'm looking for stuff here, period. Uh, okay. And, and then when I look it up on the MLS, I can validate that. So it is okay. a, it is something that's that's accessible, right? Like there are okay, standards. Okay. Uh but Again, if it's if it's an issue, then I'm making do with what I got now. Uh, but even just the county mm -hmm. thing is going to really move the needle right. for me. Absolutely, I've, I've got a weird yeah. blend of things I'm doing right now. To be yeah, no, every city, yeah, watch. every city is different. Like when I, another user that I was talking to in I think New Orleans, uh, they said they don't have counties. They have like something called parish or something. I I don't know. I'm like, what? You don't have county? It's just kind of weird. But yeah, I mean, they call it something else. So yeah, we would want to make sure like standardize as much as possible so when you go in you just say hey you know i have this deal because that's how we can link it back right if i have this deal in uh you know in a specific city then we want to be able to say hey these are the buyers that you have geotagged for this city you know these are the ones that already match based on this city county or whatever areas that you have and then just make the process a little bit easier so that's what we would want to do is like as much as possible like have like a database of all the neighborhoods if possible, then you're selecting from those neighborhoods. So just to make the process moving forward much easier. So you have a property, you just go into the buyer's database and say, you know, just select for, hey, show me all the, or, or it could be something here in my, in my, you know, pipeline right here, where you go in and say, hey, show me all the buyers that for this city, you know, state or county. And it just shows you a list of buyers and then just make the process you know, much simpler, you know, without having less clicks to navigate. But cool. Yeah, no, this is, this has been really, really great feedback. Any, any other questions or uh, ideas that you guys have? Um, Tony, if you email me, I'll see kind of why you're having, like right now, the geotags are basically the information that you input. It, it could be a misspell. It could be anything. It's like free form. You could just put in anything. Uh, so it doesn't work like what, what I'm saying, like that'll be an update in the future where you, uh, it's like specific city, county, zip code, uh, in state, and then hopefully neighborhoods also. That's like a nationwide database. And then you select from one of those uh, neighbor, and then it starts geotagging uh, those buyers. Okay, I'll email you. I, I, I have just uh, had to board, I had to delete a bunch of uh, buyers because they just did not import right. I could not sort by geographical area, so. I'll okay. try to take some screenshots and show you what I ran into. Yeah, if you send it to me, just email me directly or Sharad that we simply and I'll look into that. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Any other any other questions or thoughts that you guys have? Cool. All right. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for being on the call and uh, you know, giving awesome feedback. Uh, so I'll talk to my team then on the the buyer list widget. I think that that should be super quick to do i'm guessing but i'll talk to him where we can just have it right on the website you know like a top let me do this let me log out of so you can have it like something on the top or like at the bottom where it says add me to your buyers list and you put your name phone number email and it just automatically adds them to the buyers list or something or it just opens up the the web form and they can fill out their information uh so that should not be too hard but i'll, I'll talk to my team uh, and see what that would look like. All right. Any anything else that I can help you guys with? Um, okay. Would it be possible if I talk to you for like five minutes to share something after this, or is there a way that I can yeah. schedule a call with you directly? 
Yeah, why don't I, uh, I think I have your cell phone number. Do you want me to give you a call on your cell after this? Sure, that'd be, that'd be great. Okay, cool. I'll do that. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for being on the call. This recording will be available in 24 hours. We'll put it on our help center and also email it out to everyone. Cool. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You, Bye. Appreciate it. Bye. Have a happy Thanksgiving. You too. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thanks. Bye.